we have redesigned the event system in Trailblazer from the ground up. You now have the ability to include free tickets for paid events. You can mix ticket and merchandise sales on the same event. You can pay later. You can even pay by grant and you may sign up several people at the same time. Each person that has been signed up for the event will receive a ticket by email for that event. Let's take a look at how this might look on your website. My website has a theme of panda bears on it and I've gone to my events page. As I scroll down my events page I'm going to see a few things over here. For instance, I've got a filter control where I can see all of my events which I am currently in right now or I could look for events for next week or this weekend, this month, or next month. Let's select my buy event. In this we've got a grand opening. We've been running a capital campaign for a while and we've got a grand opening and event coming up and we're giving away free tickets for that. And I'd like to buy three tickets. Buy three tickets. I've also got an option to maybe buy some other parts to the building. For instance, maybe I'd like to buy a wing for that. Well, that's a half a million dollars. In my case, maybe I would like to buy a bench and I'll buy one of those. I'll now order and register. I can see that I have purchased three free tickets for the event's grand opening and I am buying a bench. The next thing is to fill in the information for who it is that's buying this, which is me. Because I'm buying three tickets, the program wants to know who are the three ticket holders. Well, I'm the first ticket holder. I've entered the names of the three ticket holders in this area. The next area is the billing information. I'll complete that. The payment type. Again, I can choose a particular credit card or I could say bill me later. In which case the credit card information collapses. I enter my security code and complete the registration order. Had this been paid by credit card, this would have said your receipt, but in this case it's an invoice because I do owe this money. I have received an order confirmation in my inbox as well as ticket information. The other ticket holders for this event have also received this email. Now that we've seen how the event system might look on your website, let's take a look at how these events are set up in Trailblazer. We're going to set up a Peta Panda event and it's going to have the following features. A location, a published organizer to contact, a sign-up cutoff time so that you can close registration at some preset time, tickets of varying prices, a coffee mug, and special instructions for the attendees when they receive their tickets. In Trailblazer, I'll open my events link, and just to show you that I do have some previously defined events in here, I click the search button so that you can see that I have created events in the past. I'm going to create a brand new event by clicking the New button. I am going to publish this to our website. I'll enter my title. I'll enter the address for this event and I want to publish that also on the website. Publishing the address information also adds a map to the event page. I'll set my start and stop time for this event. So that I know how many people to plan for in this event, I do need to close the registration at some preset time. Now I can do that in the drop down shown here. In my case I'll show two days before, but I could also pick a very specified time if I wanted to. In my event description, I'll put in something like this. Or if I would really like to spruce it up, I can even paste in HTML code, which is what I'm going to do. You'll see in a, in a little bit what that will look like on the website. Next I will enter the person to contact for any questions about this event. I've completed the definition for the event. It's now time to set up the products and the tickets that we're going to be selling. For that, I'm going to go to my Products tab, and I've got a Merchandise and Tickets. I'm going to click on Merchandise. I'll choose New. It's telling me I need to save my event before I can do this, of course, so I will do that. I'll click my New Merchandise item. This will be specific to this particular event, but I could pick from a global list. Generally, you're going to pick things that are specific to the event. In my case, it's going to be the Panda Mug. The sequence tells me if I've got multiple things that I'm going to be selling, it, the sequence allows me to set an order. So I could put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, or 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 
to put in an order or sequence on these. Since I'm only selling one piece of merchandise, I really don't need to put in any sequence there. The next is, how many mugs do I have in stock to sell? In my case, I've got 250 of them. And the next one is, how many can a person purchase at one time? I may restrict the quantities or I may not. So I could say 250, but chances are what I really would rather do is set that down to 100 because it's going to create a drop down box where I may not want to populate that with all 250 at a time. The next thing of course is to set the price on that mug which I'm going to set at $15 and I'll save it. Now that I have my merchandise added to this event, it's time to put on my tickets. I'll click on my tickets tab, click new, and again, this is a ticket specific to this event. And for this one, I'll put adult. Now, because I am going to have multiple ticket items on here, I do want the adult ticket to display first on the website. So I'm going to start at a number 10. My next one I'll do at 20. I'm going to establish my adult seating capacity at 500. And I'll establish my max order quantity at 10. The unit price for the adult ticket is $25. I'll save that and start another. And this one will be my student and senior pricing. This one's going to be in position number two, or in my case, I'm setting it to 20. And that's just to give me room in case I wanted to put something in between 10 and 20 at some point down the road. I could do that. I'll set my capacity on this for also 500. Maximum order quantity I will set at 10 and the unit price for this will be $15. The final step in the process is to go to the setup tab and make any changes in here that you'd like. In my case I'd like to be able to redirect the person after they've completed the order back to my home page for my pandemonium site. This link description field refers to when the order is complete, what do you want them to see for a link here as to what page you'd like to return them back to. At this point I've got it saying back to Trailblazer, but I'm going to say return to Pandemonium. The special instructions are emailed to each attendee that you signed up and can be any special instruction that you might want the ticket holders to know about. We'll save and close, and let's take a look at how this looks now on my website. I've returned to my events page, where when I scroll down, I will see the new event that I just created in Trailblazer added to my website, called Petapanda. When I select my Petapanda, I see my adult ticket and my senior ticket options listed here. I'll add one on, and I'll add one here, and I'll even buy a mug. If I scroll down, I'll see an event description. This was the specialized code I had placed in the, in the description area. I'll order and register. I'll scroll down for payment. This time I'll select a Visa card. Now you can see I've got a receipt with an order total and I can return back to my website.